But Carl, we'll start with you. Um, your biggest takeaways on today, and it hasn't been so much about big names. We haven't heard that name like a Caden Proctor or, or a Caleb Downs. There hasn't really been that surprise. Uh, but your takeaway on today and really kind of the, what your outlook is over the next two weeks. My biggest takeaway is going to be more for the high school player and the high school coach. And understanding that recruiting has completely changed in the last five or six years. High school players need to understand, and college coaches need to adjust to this as well. The old conversation of it's not a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision. Those things are over. We don't area recruit anymore, so you're not going to have the same coach coming in the same high school all the time. Everybody's position recruiting. The pressure to win is at an all-time high. I talked to a group of kids that were on their way to the Under Armour camp in Nashville last week, and I told them this. You need to find a place where you can go play as fast as you can. Because if you don't play within two years, there's a likely, op there's a likely chance that the coach is going to ask you to leave. And no matter what the relationship is with your high school coach, no matter what he told your mom and dad during the recruiting process, it's too much pressure for you to win. And if you go and play, your trajectory is going to be like this. But if you go somewhere and you sit on the bench and you don't play, the fall down is going to be really hard. It's going to be hard for your ego. It's going to be hard for your pockets. It's going to be hard on your relationships. And college coaches need to change the way that they have those conversations with high school coaches and with players and say, listen, we're going to be family if you play. But if you don't play well, you have to go. Because those discipline issues that you were talking about earlier, Smoke, only matter to guys that aren't productive. Co guys that are productive, those coaches say, it's not that big of a deal, Smoke. We'll be able to work through it. Real quick, Chris, before we get your reaction, we got some news here. Uh, former Texas running back Darian Brown, the former four-star recruit out of Buford, Georgia. He hasn't given up his hopes of playing college football five years after suffering a stroke. He is entering the NCAA transfer portal as a graduate transfer. On Tuesday, you think about Texas, you think about that running back room as well, C.J. Baxter, Jaden Blue, uh, certainly a lot of talent there under Tashard Choice. Any information on him or anything uh, that you can shed some light on in his situation? Well, it was really sad when he had to medically retire like that's something you never want to see in that situation he was a really talented kid coming out of georgia and i know there were a lot of people around the texas program at the time that were really excited about his future and i i don't have a ton to add but i hope he's healthy and ready to play because it's a really cool story to see somebody uh make their career come back like that I, w I will say, like, you, you never know. Leatu Latu was one of those guys. He's getting ready to be a first-round draft pick, right? Got DQ'd medically at Washington under Jimmy Lake. Had a neck injury. Goes back. Gets a second opinion from a doctor. Goes to UCLA. Gets cleared. Ends up back with his old defensive line coach in Akaika Malloy. And now this guy is, you know, big body, can get after the quarterback, and is going to get ready to hear his name called pretty early, right? So there are examples of this, and um, obviously we hope for the best for Darian Brown and his future. Um, Chris, back to you. Just your reaction on the day. We've talked about big picture items. We've talked uh, a lot about the minutia as well and some of the players, but uh, your reaction to kind of what you've seen unfold and what you expect to see unfold over the next couple weeks. I think it's been an interesting day. There's been a lot of really quality players going the portal. Obviously, a lot of names that people aren't as familiar with, but um, that's an important time of the year, as we've discussed about as well. And I think moving forward, you're going to continue to see a couple more big names. I don't think it's going to be I think people need to tamper their expectations a little bit during the spring window. It's not going to be bombshell after bombshell like what we saw in the winter, but there are going to be quality players uh, throughout the portal. You're going to see guys moving up. You're going to see guys filling important spots in the two deeps places. So um, I think this is one. This is a cycle more for the hardcore college football fan, but that's what we do at 24-7 Sports. So I hope you all are locked in. It's a good plug from our boy Chris there. It is. Hey, if you're joining us right now, you're in hour three. You're trying to figure out what Colorado is doing in the linebacker position. We appreciate you guys joining us. Smoke, uh, your final takeaways from today. My final takeaway is understanding that this is a slow process in terms of players getting in. But what you, you need to understand is that this is where the personnel department, general managers, and the valuation process is heightened. Because you just said for the hardcore, you don't have to be hardcore if you've been doing your due diligence on the names at the lower level or the names that are still in the transfer portal that can necessarily help your team. So December is easy because all the big names are out there and you just saw those players play 10 to 12 games. Spring is more difficult because you got to go back through, comb through all of the players shake out a couple of weeds, 
Go in the lower level to see what player can come in like Florida State did to help elevate your program. So you have to get locked into your personnel department, make sure you're hiring the right people, and put some more pennies, dime, money, and understanding that your personnel department is just as important as your coaching staff and your support staff. I think that's the next movement with this transfer portal window moving like it is now. I think you're dead on. You know, we talk about the CBA and we kind of joke about that and college football really starting to mirror the NFL and what that's going to look like. I think the other thing about that, Chris, maybe you can expand on this a little bit is there's legislation right now being reviewed by the rules committee uh, talking about being able to say, you know what, our coaches, they don't need to be able to travel on the road. And guess what? There's an uh, unlimited count of coaches that we can have that can actually have on-field experience. So those analysts, all those guys, it doesn't matter who the off-field support staff members are going out on the road. What that does is that's an expanded role for a lot of front office um, support staff members as well. And the other thing about this is we've seen it already, but you have a pro department, you have a collegiate department at the NFL. What, that is here now in college football where you're going to have a college department that only identifies and evaluates other rosters as well as their own and then a high high school department as well so uh, that's going to be fascinating college football continues to change uh, right before our eyes and let's get into um, this full screen here and we'll talk a little bit about the top players available Kane Proctor Number, number one name on the board, we've talked about him, Damian Martinez, Keandre Lambert-Smith, the receiver from Penn State, Jacoby Matthews from Texas A&M, Takario Davis, obviously in a unique situation in Tucson in Arizona, Nigel Lee Kelly, young, talented pass rusher out of Florida, Brandon Hickman, interior offensive lineman from SMU, uh, Philip Bleedy, we have not talked about today, but certainly a name that's very coveted in the transfer portal, Eli Stowers and Elijah Herring. So there you have it, the top 10 players best available. Uh, shout out to Derek Chain, Clint Brewster, our transfer portal team, doing a tremendous job there as well. Um, last point I'd like to hit, strategically, these spring games, more than half of them haven't been played. Do you think there's something to that? Absolutely. <laughs> If I'm, a, if I'm a coach or I'm in the personnel department, I am begging my coach to push that window back a little bit farther than I, that, that you can get to. Because mm -hmm. I don't want my players out in the building, but I also want to understand that the players that you're letting out of your building because your spring game is so far uh, or ahead of mine, I can go in and now snatch that player up. Mm -hmm. Carl, what do you think about that, those exit meetings? Uh, I, I think that that's the, the, the way that you have to do it. You need to move your spring game back as far as possible. If you can, it only helps you. <laughs> you know, jamming it up against the window a little bit, you know. Um, Chris, any last final impression? I know I just put you on the spot again, but if there's one thing that you take away from today, maybe a lower value player that kind of stands out, is there is it real quick? I think it's that there's still going to be some big movement later on. Um, I wouldn't get lost in the sauce here. Um, maybe feel disappointed this morning. There's going to be more names in the portal, and uh, I think there's some really quality players that are going to help the team. Still got some more time. Got two weeks. And, guys, for the last time, I'm going to remind you one last time, we got a national promo for the transfer portal that ends tomorrow night at midnight Eastern time. 60% off annual subscriptions to 24-7 sports. Dot com. You can't miss it. Make sure you do that. You have seen the power of our team here at 24-7 Sports. To all our team site members, we appreciate you. To my guys, Smoke Dixon, Carl Reed, Chris Hummer, Matt Zenitz, Andrew Ivins, and everybody else that helped us out. We appreciate it. And to my boy, Kenny Williams, great job today. Thanks for watching 24-7 Sports.